hey what's up coders welcome back to my channel in this video I'll be showing you how to integrate Google sign in in your flutter application so whenever you're developing app and say if it is a profile based app then definitely you need a registration screen and to make it more convenient for your user you will try to use um, sign in with Google or Facebook Twitter and many more so today we are going to do something very similar to it and the UI is pretty straightforward with a background image and you have these three buttons stacked over it. When I click on the sign in with Google, um, I get this pop up asking me to choose the account that I would like to link this app with. And the moment I click on the link, um, I'm actually routed to another page, which is the profile screen where it actually displays few profile details of the account that I'm actually selecting here. So that's pretty straightforward with the UI and the implementation. So first let's see the demo section and then I'll talk about the setup and then we will move on with the implementation. So moving on uh, with the demo section, uh, I'm gonna click on the first button which is sign in with the Google. Then I get the snack bar and then I get the dialog popped up asking me to choose the account that I would like to authorize. So here I'm selecting the first account and then once the authorization and the credentials are right, I'm routed to another section or page, which is the profile section. So here I get my username detail, my email and the provider and the profile picture. So the, these details are not static. They are coming from the back end. Here I have a sign out button and when I click on it, it just pops off this particular screen and signs me out and takes me back to the home screen. So before we start with the, um, the main screen, we need to perform few setup, uh, that is creation of the project and adding dependencies. So I'm just gonna walk through those details very quickly because um, we have covered them in our previous Firestore video. So I'm gonna add a link in the description of this video where I have explained in depth as to how to create the project, how to download the JSON file, where you have to add it, and what are the dependencies required. Once you have created a project, you would be uh, routed to the screen. And here you have to click on the authentication. So when you click on the authentication, you would get these four tabs displayed and click on the sign in method. And here you have to enable the Google sign in because we are focusing on the Google sign in today. So click on this. Initially it would be disabled. Enable the switch and also make sure that you add a particular email address here and then click on save. The moment you do that, you would get this enabled here. So that's the simple setup on your Firebase. Next, you need to add few plugin details. So one is the Google sign-in, Firebase, Auth, and I'm gonna leave the details of these plugin of this video description. I'm also gonna give you the details of the versions that I'm using. Uh, when you're doing this, definitely you might uh, land up in this error of Android X migration error. So I'm also gonna leave a link of this particular article where it gives you a clear explanation as to how you could tackle it and um, I've also explained it in my previous video as well. When you're done with all this, done with the basic setup of your uh, Firebase section. So now we will move on with the UI part. All right, so moving on with the implementation, um, I have here a very simple bare bones stateful widget. And um, here I'm using a stack widget because you have this image occupying the entire screen and you have these buttons um, stacked over this image. Here, I'm also using another interesting class which is called the Builder class. Now I'll tell you in a moment why am I using it. If you had seen my demo video, when I clicked on the sign in with Google, immediately I was played with a snack bar here saying sign in. The reason that we are using a Builder class is um, we have the snack bar and in the snack bar there is this context available. Now, the context that has been passed to the build function actually refers to the parent of widget. Now here, the parent widget is not the scaffold widget in this case, when you click on the sign in and then you get a snack bar. So then how do we give the snack bar widget the context 
or how do we give the snack bar widget the access to the parent scaffold widget so in order to do that we are actually using the builder class where it actually passes the context of the scaffold widget do the implementation part i'll exactly show you where i'm using the context and why we are using this builder class and so we will move on with the implementation so let's start up with the um, widget um, so first thing i'm going to use a container for this particular image to cover the entire phone screen so let me add those details for you All right, so there you see I have built this container which takes the width and height of the screen and then I have this image and I've given this color blend and few opacity value of 0.6 and with the fit of box fit fill. So that's when you get this image with an opacity. Now I'm going to add the buttons. It's basically a column widget inside uh, which I have these three buttons stacked one below the other. So it's a pretty straightforward raised button. So I'm going to add all those details and I'll show you how it looks. All right, there you go. So I have built the first button, which is um, what you see here. So similar way, I'm going to uh, build the other buttons as well. And then I will show you the um, Google implementation part of the uh, uh, application and how to add the sign-in part. So let me add the other two buttons and we will move on with the next section. There you go. So you can see the three buttons. I've used a similar concept like the first one. It's just the text and the icons have changed and the rest all remains the same. First thing what we have to do here is we're going to create a model class so that we can get the username, the URL, the email details. So for that, I'm going to create a class called user detail. This basically holds all your properties. So I have the provider details, username, photo URL, email, and there is also another list because when you want, if you, if you just want the name, URL, email, it's pretty simple but if you want the provider data like the firebase detail the user id then it's another list so for that you need another class of it so i'm going to show you how it looks and now we're going to add the constructor All right, so here I've exclusively mentioned another um, class, which was the provider details, because it's another list to retrieve the details. So here I'm going to add provider details, uh, which is another property. So this way we would be able to fetch all these details. So now let's see the uh, sign-in integration. So for that, first thing we need to do is add the Firebase uh, authentication, Google sign-in references. So I'm going to use it as Firebase Auth. And this is nothing but the Firebase Auth instance. So first thing. Next, we need the Google sign-in uh, instance. And this is going to be Google sign-in. There you go. 
So once you're done with it, we're going to uh, create the future method, which is the sign-in. This is where your authentication part happens. So the aim of the function is sign in uh, in my scenario and here I'm going to pass the build context. Now inside this the moment you click on sign in the first thing is the snack bar. So you remember I had used the builder class. The reason was that I'm referencing a scaffold here and and I'm using the context here. Now if I'm using a context here, but the parent widget, which is the scaffold is still not available. So then how do I pass the context here? So in order to get that, we are manually doing it by using the builder class. So that's the reason I had to um, uh, add the builder class before my stack to get this context here. So now moving on with the authentication part. So first thing we have to do is we have to um, call the sign in function. So for that we have Google sign in authentication and we are going to give Google user and this is going to be await and it would be your Google sign in. Um, the Google sign in authentication. So the first, okay, I think this was the account. So first we have the account and then we have the authentication. So this one would be Google auth. And here what you do is again, you use await and you say Google user dot authentication. So now it's going to check for our credentials which is the final auth credential. So these are the mandatory steps that you have to carry out in order to get that Google integration. You say Google auth provider dot get credentials. And here you're going to pass the access token, which is Google auth. And um, we'll also pass the ID token as well, which is the Google auth now we move on with the Firebase and then we say Firebase auth dot sign in with credentials. Okay, there you go. We have and we will pass the credentials here. Now when this is fine, we have to also get the provider info. So if you don't want the provider info, you don't have to do this step. So here we will collect the provider details and here I'm going to give the name as provider info and here I'm going to pass the user details provider data uh, I think I have to pass ID let's see what the detail is provider ID yeah so when I do that I get my provider info available here create the list and add all these details And then I'm going to pass, I'm going to add my provider info inside this provider data. All right, so we are set with this part. Now let's retrieve the ID display photo details. So that is available in our user details. So we need to add them in the details section. So now we have received, we have connected with the backend, got authenticated with the credentials, then we've got connected with the Firebase, retrieved all the provider and the user details. Now what we have to do is we have to ensure that when you click on that link, it has to take you to another screen, which is the profile screen, which displays all these details. So for that, I'm going to use a navigator. Navigator push and here I'm going to pass the context and the root is the material and I'm passing all the details um, into this particular screen. So let's add this function on the click so that when we click on the button so we have the Google sign-in, so on pressed, yeah. So I'm going to use 
the fat arrow function and I'm gonna just avoid this and I'm gonna say sign in context and um, I'm also gonna print this because if you want to see the details on the print screen you can definitely use them user this is just for debugging or if you want to see the details I'm just using this or else you can just say sign in context and you are good to go and then also um, I'm using a catch error in case if there's an exception an option to print the details of the user that you retrieve from the backend and also navigating to a new screen which is the profile screen uh, which we would be building it in a moment just to display those details all right so profile screen i've added all the necessary package that we need here and here the constructor has the detail user because we are passing the details from my main screen to the profile screen and then here i'm going to build a simple uh, page with just the profile that's getting displayed um, when you click on the button so i'll quickly add those details and if i find something different i will explain it as and when i do it so I'm going to start up with the um, reference to the Google sign because uh, we need a sign out function. So for that, we need this Google sign in reference. And then I'm going to add the scaffold and the app bar, which is pretty straightforward. So here you can see that I'm fetching the username. So on the app bar, I just want to display the username. So and I'm giving this automatically imply leading false because I don't want I don't have an, any um, back button or any leading icon here. So here what I'm doing is I'm adding an sign out button with on pressed. What I'm doing is I'm taking the reference and then I'm calling the sign out function, which is the built in function. And then I'm also printing and at the same time, I'm also using a navigator pop just to make sure that the current screen closes and you move to the main screen. So that's about the app bar section. Now let's move on to the body section, which is just displaying of these details one below the other. Alright, so now in my network image, that is the background of my circle avatar would be the profile image. So for that, I would be using detail user dot and I have the photo URL picked up from the back end. So that way I can display the details. So similar way, I'm also displaying the name. Uh, just attached uh, the name text here and then the username and with some styling. Similar way, I'm going to use uh, the other email and the provider details. So that's it. So let me quickly build this and I'll show you how it looks. So there you go. It's built successfully. And when I click on sign in with Google, I get the snack bar sign in and then the dialog and then I can choose the account and then I get the details in my profile screen uh, of the account that I have chosen. So there you go. This is how you integrate uh, Google sign in in your Flutter application. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, all you have to do is create a project on Firebase, um, get your dependencies right, get your plugins right, then enable the Google sign in and follow those steps and you should be good to go with the integration. So hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a like and do subscribe. And if you find this informative, please do share it. Thank you.